It's always fun to visit a new city, a place you've never seen before, full of strange and exciting things. But it can be just as strange and exciting visiting a place you already know. It's kind of like visiting an old friend, a friend that you had some good times with, but also some bad times with. A friend that knows a lot of good people and a lot of not so good people. He can be cold and distant, but also warm and welcoming. He doesn't really care if you have money, but he won't let you stay for too long if you ain't got none. He can get dressed up real nicely, but he tends to smell like piss anyway. Constantly changing, he's got a pretty dark history, but you can still see joy on his face. He's got some trouble going to sleep, just like you. It's always fun to visit another city, especially when that city is Berlin. If you arrive by train, your first place of contact will be Berlin's main train station. You can find everything you need here. Fairly affordable goods, different cuisines from all around the globe and a crazy amount of commuters. If you're not hungry or don't feel like shopping, you can always ride one of many, many, many escalators that are available free of charge. Our first point of interest was Rewe, which means he cries in my language, but he didn't cry at all. He was quite happy actually and spreading joy all around. Despite parts of Berlin being quite socialist till 1989, capitalism has spread around the city much faster than in the good old Eastern Europe. It's obvious when you look at the amount of options and fresh produce available in this store. And the prices are not too bad, especially when compared to Slovakia's capital, where the median wage is way lower. Reve has allowed me to solve my breakfast problem for less than 80 cents, which is pretty cool if you ask me. We booked a room in Park Inn right here on Alexanderplatz, which is pretty dope because it's the only tall building on this square, except for the legendary TV tower itself. I freaking love this square, I feel like it was socialist going, see guys, we can build cool stuff too. The hotel it was pretty okay, nothing special, but for the price of 103 euro, it seemed like a pretty fair deal. The room was kinda tiny and freaking cold, even when the AC was off. Crazy thing was that this elevator was the speediest freaking elevator I've ever seen in my entire life. It would take us from the ground floor to the 14th floor in a matter of seconds. I mean literally less than 5 seconds. When going down, it felt almost like a free fall, which made my assistant quite sick. Anyways, this is the interior and this is what the reception looked like. Yeah, and the Wi-Fi kinda sucked whether you were in the room or trying to work in the lobby, which also looked like it's from the 1980s, but I found it quite charming. Now let me change into my business casual attire and we can go check out the city center. Our first and very much mandatory stop, if you're visiting Berlin for the first time, was the Brandenburg Gate. We saw tons of people waiting in front of this hotel. They were all excitedly waiting for the Rolling Stones to come out and say hi. I doubt they did, because they were also waiting there the next day when we came back. Anyway, the gate. The restoration was so successful that looking at these magnificent 18th and 19th century buildings, it's difficult to believe that as recently as 1960s, this part of the city was just ruins. Not too far away from the gate itself lies a little park where you can pee for free and the iconic Reichstag, the German parliament that was famously burned down by Hitler and his friends. It's worth visiting the Reichstag dome, which offers immaculate views of a nearby old town. We weren't so lucky, because we didn't feel like waiting for two hours to get inside. That's why it's better to book a visit in advance. There were also some people protesting against COVID. Little did they know, COVID has been banned already and replaced with the war in Ukraine. They have banned COVID everywhere in Germany, except for the public transport and trains. If you turn back where you came from and walk in the blistering heat for a little while, you'll find the depressingly famous Holocaust Museum, which is basically a large square full of black rectangles. A favorite spot for Instagram influencers without any taste or self-awareness. It's also a nice spot to get lost, hide from the incredible heat, or play hide and seek. The architect of this memorial took inspiration from the densely clustered gravestones of Prague's Jewish cemetery. Another fun fact. In order to fight vandalism, they had to use anti-graffiti paint for the blocks. Anti-graffiti paint made by the same company that produced Cyclone B, the gas used in the Nazi gas chambers. What else is there to see? Honestly a lot of stuff, some of it is even quite positive. Like this giant ice cream statue, these apartment blocks that look quite lovely in my opinion, the giant mall of Berlin with this fun food court slide and a punny exit sign. Painting straight up celebrating and portraying socialism as a great communal party with different musical instruments. Speaking of socialism, there is also a lot of these tiny tourist shops selling all kinds of socialist relics if you're into that kind of stuff. There's also a bunch of pretty cool gift shops and a giant balloon that has lovely messages on it for you. 
Walk for a few minutes and you will hit the Checkpoint Charlie. Checkpoint Charlie marked the border between East and West Berlin. As per usual, the Soviets came up with another special practical idea of surrounding the entire Eastern Berlin with a giant wall in order to protect their beloved citizens from disgusting fascists, which somehow always tend to reside in the West. Over 3 million East Germans managed to escape the socialist regime before the wall was finished in 1961. The rest were not so lucky. Nowadays, the remains of the wall in the city are almost invisible, except for the parts where they were purposely made visible, such as the East Side Gallery, which we will visit very soon. Please subscribe. Uh, please subscribe. Uh, subscribe. Moving on, you should probably visit Gendarmenmarkt, which has not one, not two, but three cool buildings on it, including a Schiller statue accompanied by a pretty cool fountain. One of these buildings, the Deutsche Dom, is actually free to enter and offers a bunch of interesting info about Germany's history. Unfortunately, it's all in German, but that's okay, because I like pictures, and I like maps, and I like pretending I'm the Bundeskanzler. If you have a couple minutes or just want to cool off, check out the nearby Q Mall which has some really cool art in it and generally looks cool. It is not allowed to film in this area. That's why the footage is so damn shaky. One last stop on our city center tour. Check out this gay Nivea store. Everything inside is gay. Isn't it cool? We took a quick nap and then went to check out one of my favorite spots in this city, the Alexanderplatz. And when I say check out the Alexanderplatz, I mean wait for 30 minutes in front of the freaking tourist knickknack store till my assistant picks the right kind of magnet while we're here. Let me tell you a bit about this place. Alexanderplatz is a product of a 1960s vision of how the center of a modern socialist metropolis should look like. With the gigantic TV tower looming above all Berlin, Alexanderplatz, an unmistakable product of the Eastern Germany, is easy to find. And as a major U-Bahn and S-Bahn and tram station, it's also easy to get to. This square has also seen some of the largest protests before the fall of the Iron Curtain. There is a couple of things you should check out around this square. Among them, the appropriately named Rotes Rathaus, or Red Town Hall, and this freaking TV tower. Just look at it. It's magnificent. And there is a restaurant on top of it that spins around its own axis. Isn't that cool? Yeah, and there's also this old church. Cool, I guess. The centerpiece of the large square just below the TV tower is the Neptune fountain, with the Neptune himself chilling on a shell. Around the rim of the fountain sit four chicks, symbolizing the four most important German rivers. The Rhine, the Vistula, the Oder and the Elbe. Where's Daniel, huh? About 10 minute walk from Alexanderplatz, one of the chillest spots in Berlin can be found. The Museum Insel, or Museum Island, is a home to some of the world's greatest museums and an absolute must for any visitor to Berlin. Unfortunately, we don't have time to visit any of these museums, but they are definitely worth a visit if you can. Some of the most important and jaw-dropping antiques of human history can be found in these museums, such as the freaking Gate of Ishtar, a gate that was dug up from the old Babylon and then brought over to the island. Things really took off when German explorers and archaeologists began stealing stuff from historical sites in Egypt and Asia. The booty brought back by Egyptologist Lepsius in the 1840s formed the core of what is about to become one of the best collections of stolen stuff in Europe. Other than that, Museum Island is a very cool spot for taking pictures, chilling by the river and simply watching the life go by. But you don't have to trust my word. Just look at all these young hipsters lounging around. Isn't it splendid? In order to get to the East Side Gallery and see this legendary painting, you have to get to the overwhelmingly residential East Berlin borough of Friedrichshain. Your best bet is taking the public transport, which as of 2022 is not only extremely easy to use, but also extremely cheap. A monthly ticket for all public transport, including the trains within each region of Germany, costs only, wait for it, 9 euros. Now that's a banger of a deal if you ask me. Getting around this city is very efficient and the metro stations are really, really shallow, which is surprisingly convenient. Anyway, this place is basically a 1.3 kilometer long stretch of a wall, but it being the legendary Berlin Wall, it is also painted with political and satirical murals that became one of the city's best known landmarks. Just check out all this cool wall art. You can find over 150 works of art from authors from all over the world. And as a bonus, it's free! 
it's a nice place for taking some influencer shots. But if I'm ever back, I won't necessarily be returning to this part of Berlin, since it's really quite residential and there is nowhere to hide from the incredible heat that has taken over this city. But in general, it was a pretty cool experience. That was quite a bit of information in one video. But in reality, we haven't seen shit. See that yellow circle? That's everything we got to see in 24 hours. See the rest of this map? That's everything we didn't get to see. But to be honest, to see entirety of Berlin could take a couple of lifetimes. And ain't nobody got time for that. I only have this one lifetime and I spent most of it commuting or being stuck on Czechoslovak trains anyway. However, if you like this video, then freaking like it and don't forget to subscribe. In exchange, we can travel to these different places together and even have a chat. Just hit me up in the comments or on my Instagram, which you will find in the description of this video. Thank you so much for watching and have a lovely, wonderful week. See you next time.